Biobalance HealthCast Episode 208, Traumatic Brain Injury. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast. This week, Dr. Kathy Maupin and I are going to be talking about traumatic brain injury. It's been in the news a lot lately uh, with the NFL and issues with the mm-hmm. NFL, but it's been in the news for years for other things. Uh, traumatic brain injury is not a rare condition. The most common occurrence of traumatic brain injury is falls among the elderly. And mm-hmm. about 65% of all of the traumatic brain injuries come from falling. Uh, and there are issues and treatments and concerns about the elderly and balance and falling, which comes to the question of hormone replacement in mm-hmm. some respects. Uh, but there's more going on about it that we want to talk about. So because it's in the news and it's current, we thought we would spend some time discussing it. There's a term that you'll hear used called chronic traumatic encephalopathy, uh, which is punch drunk syndrome. And they used to use it for boxers, and boxers, uh, boxing used to be, literally in the 50s, boxing was as big in the United States on television as football mm-hmm. is today. And My grandmother watched boxing. Yeah, the my, my <laughs> parents, I mean, for one thing, you had three networks, and so somebody had the, the contract. But I remember growing up in a house where people were watching boxing all the time, and now it's almost unheard of, and you don't see it, and you, and you get outcomes like Muhammad Ali, who has Parkinson's, Mm -hmm. which is directly related to all the head blows that he received. There are a lot of things related to head injuries. Yes. That we don't really think about. That I want you to think about all the people that you know who have had auto accidents, or if you've had an auto accident with a head injury at in the auto accident Mm -hmm. where you've hit your head, all the people that you know who have played football or who have had Fall, have fallen down the stairs. It doesn't matter what age you are. It's not mm-hmm. just for even the, little children. Even fall children. out of their crib. Fall out of the bed. It may even start uh, a series of traumatic uh, brain injuries can occur from birth when there is a traumatic uh, delivery with forceps or a difficult delivery just oh, wow. coming coming out, but because of the bone structure of the mother, okay. tra- traumatizing the brain. But having said that, children and, and babies respond much better and heal faster than adults. So if you've had these things, then I want you to to key in on all of the different effects that it can have in your life because you may know someone who has had this and has terrible depression. That could be secondary to the traumatic brain injury. Or you may know someone who has um, a balance problem did they have? Did they have a, an accident, an auto accident? Did they fall down the stairs? Well, and they and they make distinctions among categories because they talk about mild traumatic brain injury, which doesn't necessarily involve a loss of consciousness. I mean, you mm-hmm. just get slammed around, you get jarred, you get bucked off of a horse, somebody knocks you into a door, you slip and fall, mm-hmm. you hit your head on the ground when you're skiing or on the water when you're water skiing. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can do enough damage without becoming unconscious that you have long-term lifetime effects that deteriorate and progressively get worse over time, which really starts to show up and be visible with the development of different forms of dementia and Alzheimer's in aging. So that's another thing. If you can't remember things or if you're, if after an incident, you can have a loss immediately after, and then you can have loss ongoing mm-hmm. because there's an inflammation and a repair process where that repair is like scarring. And so you're not, you're not really healing, you're just scarring or you're developing um, inflammatory um, cells that are sitting on top of your nerves, which stops the, the progression of the um, messaging in the nerves. And some of that progression is stopped because of the loss or the destruction of human growth hormones. Right. So hormones can be, here's, it's a cause and effect, but mm-hmm. it, it can be a traumatic brain injury can cause you to not make your hormones anymore. Like testosterone. Like, like well, the, the hormone that, 
that stimulates the production mm-hmm. of testosterone from the er, from the testicles or the ovaries. Mm-hmm. So that can be uh, impacted. It also can impact the function of growth hormone, which is your repair hormone, the hormone that helps you heal. So so the other two are thyroid stimulating hormone. So your thyroid can be mm-hmm. affected, and also your cortisol and your adrenal gland can be affected. So all four of those glands that that are um, target glands can be affected by the the stimulatory hormones from your brain. So a brain injury can cause that, and then low hormones can then cause it not not to heal well. So when it isn't healing well and you begin to have symptomology, the symptoms tend to focus in the various lobes, depending on where the injury to your brain occurred, Mm -hmm. what you hit when you fell, what hit you, where it hit you, and so on. So I want to just kind of run through some of the symptoms that are in the frontal lobe or the parietal lobe Mm -hmm. or whatever and and how those manifest. The frontal lobe is right here. So I'll be doing the, I'll be doing the the monkey act. Anatomical description. Yeah, the frontal lobe is right in front, right behind your forehead. So for the frontal lobes, people who have damage in the frontal lobes experience mood changes. Mm -hmm. Uh, And if it's severe enough, they can experience complete personality changes. I mean, suddenly That's they where go your personality is to being located. angry all the time. And this is one of the issues with head trauma from war injuries mm-hmm. and soldiers who've been in combat, the concussive explosions, the blows to the head, uh, being, being shot or wounded in the head, mm-hmm. football players. All these football players that you yeah. hear these horrible stories about beating up their wives or uh, com- committing murder, committing suicide, uh, mm-hmm. getting into fights, all from mood changes. That personality changes. And personality they changes normally that have occurs done that. as a result of injury is what the thinking currently is. And they've been is. injured since to get into the NFL. You have to be playing football since you were a kid. So you're getting injured, having head injuries all the way through your through your life. Well, I did look at the the research before we started this mm-hmm. conversation, and it says for NFL players, NFL players have 19 times. Uh, higher rates of Alzheimer's. Nineteen. Nineteen times more. That's not just double. Alzheimer's or I mean, that's amazing. Than, than other men between thirty and forty nine. Wow, that's amazing. And then as and men age, don't usually get it between thirty so. and forty. Exactly. So that's really, that's really cutting your life back. Yeah. By many years, and they also have, they have a life expectancy. The NFL players have a life expectancy that is 10 years less right. than everyone else. And there are all kinds of factors and reasons for that. I mean, that's a global statement. Some of those factors are that the linemen who are so heavy and bulk up to 300, mm-hmm. 350 pounds, who train their cardiovascular system for short, intense bursts of maximum effort and then rest periods, mm-hmm. don't retrain their bodies when they stop playing football, if they That's don't true. lose weight and retrain their cardio system, then when they get adrenalized and they get a surge, they blow out blood vessels and mm-hmm. have strokes and heart attacks. Yeah. So, so it is. It isn't just head injuries, but but yeah, that is that is not a, a healthy statistic. Lifestyle. Yeah, That's it's true. Just, just, so you pay a lot to get paid a lot. <laughs> yes, you do. So you pay in your own life. So in your what own you look for, though, what physicians health. look for when they're assessing you for. Brain damage, and they're going. They, oh, you got hit here. The so then they lobes. ask these. They're, they're looking for mood changes. They're looking for changes in social behavior, changes in personality, loss of simple movement of various body parts, like sequencing, like doing a task, like I don't know, taking out the trash or putting away the silverware. Mm-hmm. Then you have trouble with the sequence. Like, what do I do first? Do I? How do I? Oh, I can't get the drawer out. So it's not get, really you know, motor memory. First? It's the ability to think about what you need to do a to get it events. in the order that it needs to go to make Changing it Changing batteries or, you know, something mm-hmm. that's simple that we would all find to be just automatic. Yeah. They have to stop and, and, and go through the whole sequence. an inability to plan a sequence of complex movements such as making coffee. Right. They freeze. They stand there and they look at and it. They and they stare at it. And they get frustrated and they get angry and temperamental mm-hmm. and sometimes teary because they... Ought to be able to make coffee. Well, I would be very upset if I didn't remember how to make coffee. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's huge. That's There'd be a other sign. side effects for that. For yeah, you. yeah. Uh, loss of spontaneity in interacting with others. Loss of flexibility in thinking. 
They become very focused. linear and focused mm-hmm. in their thinking processes. Uh, persistence of a single thought called perseveration. It just, it's almost like an obsession. It locks in your mind. You can't get out. Maybe the simplest example is like if you've ever been under a lot of stress and you hear a fragment of a song or commercial and it plays 50,000 times a mm-hmm. day in your head and you can't stop singing the song. Mm-hmm. That's a perseveration example. Mm-hmm. But it could be anything. Mm-hmm. It, it could be I need to call mom. Or I need to go buy a shirt or whatever pops into your head that you can't get out of. Well, it's kind of like obsessive compulsive. Yes. But, mm-hmm. but it's a, the obsessive part of it. But they call it perseveration, so it's a little different. It just it just keeps running like a mm-hmm. like a movie. And they have inability to focus on task. They have trouble attending. It's like attention deficit. So we, we call it all these different things different when it, it could we be could just be as one cause. Damage. Exactly. Uh, difficulty with problem solving and inability to express language. What they call brokaw's aphasia. They just for they can't finish sentence. Yes, and so and these could be children who mm-hmm. fell out of the crib or tripped, fall downstairs, mm-hmm. or were playing in the yard. Or like got, I fell down the stairs and and had a traumatic birth, so I could have all this stuff, mm-hmm. but currently I don't. Thank God. <laughs> I remember I got hit in the head sometime one time when I was a child so hard that my it was like all noise stopped. I didn't pass out. But my body just sort of froze, and I was completely numb. My brother and I were fighting quarterstaffs, like uh, Robin Hood. Oh, Except okay. his, mine was a broom handle, and his was an iron bar. He, he hit <laughs> I think me you got this short the end of the deal. With, oh, <laughs> you know, story of my life. <laughs> I owe that boy. Yeah. Uh, so th- those were frontal lobe mm-hmm. injuries. You can also have traumatic brain injuries uh, for the parietal lobes. Which is... Here, upper quadrant. Tempor- temporal, temporal is like right here. Mm-hmm. So parietal is up here. Okay, uh, problems with reading, Alexia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That when you haven't had it before, it's a result of the injury. Difficulty with doing mathematics. It's not just one of these things either. It's it's a group of these things. So Inability they, you have to, to go through. focus visual attention. And difficulties with hand eye coordination. Inability to locate words for writing. Inability to name an object. You see similar symptoms with strokes. Mm-hmm. It's the I same mean, kind of process. This, the idea is mm-hmm. you've lost part. You've lost a part of that Data section of your brain. Capacity. That's what your brain, your brain does. Brain. Mm-hmm. I mean, that part of your brain does all of these things. When you've injured it, then you've lost that ability. The inability to tell left from right. Lack or to of, draw. of self-awareness. Yeah, you can't uh, draw draw an object anymore. Yes. Traumatic brain injury for occipital lobes. Which is the back of your head, like if you fell backwards right on, or if somebody whacked you across the, the lower back part of your brain. That's where your all of your visual Right. Um, so you have hallucinations. Is, you, know? you see things visual that aren't there. The brain cells, uh, neurons fire and say, hey, here's something, and mm-hmm. it's not there. That would be really disturbing. That would give you a lot of downstream problems because if you're getting hallucinations... People think that you have that you have that you're crazy, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. So, and and when it's just secondary to an injury, it's not really secondary to just a neurotransmitter problem. You can have what are called visual field cuts, which mm-hmm. are just blanks. And, and like if you're looking at a 180 degree panorama, there may be a quadrant of 10 degrees that's just blank. There's nothing that you can see. It's Ooh. like a bar or something. All of these things eyes. kind of give me the. Because that part of your brain receptor that would get those cues Mm -hmm. isn't working. It's not processing because of the injury. Protect your head. (laughs) Wear helmets. Wear 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 bike helmets. Wear motorcycle helmets. Wear a helmet to get in the shower. (laughs) It's dangerous. Uh, Difficulty with the reading and writing. Difficulty loading objects in an environment. Identifying colors. Word blindness. The the inability to recognize a certain word. Yeah. Uh, difficulty in recognizing drawn objects and inability to recognize the movement of an so object. So all of these things have to do with your vision, basically. Yeah. yeah, all of these would affect your ability to drive. Mm-hmm. So and then the cerebellum. Cerebellum's yeah. low. It's part. It's part of your lower brain, and has to do with what it does. Is it, it organizes your balance? So, so so dizziness, vertigo, slurred speech, tremors. Uh, inability to reach out and grab an object, you you can't staggering. S- mm-hmm. It's one of the things that happens when you've drunk too much, and you can't make it's affected rapid movements. Yeah, so it makes you feel appear stiff and you get vertigo and disoriented. 
Oh, you would have to be slow because you'd lose mm-hmm. balance if you weren't. Yes. And then finally, brain stem issues. Mm-hmm. Brain That's stem lower issues. That down. Difficulty with insomnia, sleep apnea, balance, movement, nausea. Uh, can't dec- breathe. You can't always breathe appropriately. Swallowing food and water. Yeah, so these are these are like the base. This is what the brain stem does. And if you've injured it, you lose the ability, right, uh, the ability to actually use the benefit of that part of your brain. So. Okay, and so so the reason that Kathy and I are going through these things is because we want to talk about the coverage of the symptomology. If you're in a situation where you're concerned about yourself, somebody you love, your child especially, uh, an older adult who may live alone and who may have fallen, these kinds of things are warning cues that tell you somebody needs to look at this individual. And, mm-hmm. and we are saying to you that the data says pretty aggressively look at the issue of mild traumatic brain issues. Uh, right. Problems. I mean, I, sometimes people have car accidents and then they're different people afterwards. Mm-hmm. Their personalities changed or they act different or they have different moods or they need different medications. And mm-hmm. and no one really tracks that. I mean, neurologists are supposed to, but if they didn't know you beforehand, mm-hmm. they don't know how much you've changed. So it takes the family to tell the doctor, here's who they were before and here's who they are now. Well, so, yeah. And also to look out for all of the... Um, lack of hormones that can go along with this. That's what I usually see. I see people who are coming to me for hormonal things. Well, and this is a slide on the limbic system uh-huh. that mm-hmm. I want you to talk a little bit about. And actually, uh, a good deal of this information came to us from a workshop that we attended. This is not our information. Mm-hmm. It's uh, the uh, information from Dr. Mark Gordon. Gordon. Mark Gordon. Uh, and he has he has Millennium Healthcare in LA. Mm-hmm. That's his that's his practice, and he's an expert in traumatic brain injury, and he's been instrumental in getting um, the NFL to attend to these issues. Right. I mean, he's always in there at every level, trying to get them to get better helmets or change the rules so people aren't getting head you know putting their head down and getting head to head contact, mm-hmm. so that. The players can still play, but are not going to be damaged for life. Right. And he's also been a champion of, as you'll we'll talk about later, replacing the hormones that are missing because of the head injury. Because with this head injury, your pituitary gland is right in the center of your head. If your if your brain is injured, you most likely have an injury to your pituitary and are not going to be making the right hormones. So he feels that replacing the hormones is huge in mm-hmm. terms of recovering. Which is it's like getting a multi-headed hydra to have the different heads talk to each other. When you're talking to bureaucrats, insurance companies, doctors, and individuals. But when you get on television, issues. like Mark has, yeah. and with the NFL, with other, like on The Doctors, he's on The Doctor Show, mm-hmm. and you bring this up, it has been brought up more and more. People are actually looking into it now. Whereas five years ago, I heard him speak about this, and no one was looking into this. Mm-hmm. I mean, now it's much more, he has much more information, many more studies. But he is trying to prevent people from walking around with these problems and nobody taking care of them because it 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 goes down the line it causes auto accidents because you can't think cl- clearly you or you can't see objects you don't, move or you can't you're problem solve running over something or you can't i mean right. all of those things mm-hmm. are um, are problems that can affect other people as well but the person who's had the brain injury actually has to deal with um, how do i get better or how do i cope with this Mm -hmm. and what's really wrong with me instead of going to a doctor for this and doctor for the what's really the central part and that was the injury so so there seem to be two areas that are calling our attention to this as a society Mm -hmm. one is the nfl because the nfl is the biggest sports that we watch and listen Mm -hmm. to and and get invested in but the other has to do with soldiers who've come back from combat Mm -hmm. for the last 13 years we've been at war having combat trauma Mm -hmm. nonstop for 13 years and and the most recent statistic that i saw said that there are between 45 and 90 thousand veterans with mild head trauma who need intervention and treatment, and the system is not providing those things for them. In because oftentimes be- they call that psychiatry, and it's not. It's really not about psychiatry. It's re- it's not 
just it's not just in your head it is your head <laughs> well and it causes severe depression mm -hmm. because you lose all these capacities and abilities uh, among other reasons and your chemistry changes but so many former NFL players have committed suicide or mm -hmm. homicide and so many combat veterans with brain trauma have committed homicide uh, and suicide. The suicide rate in, among uh, active servicemen is up to one a day, and one which of the, is unbelievable. And they they are they may be treated for depression, mm -hmm. but unless you replace the hormones like testosterone, right. that doesn't make you more aggressive. It makes you le a male less aggressive. Same with females. It makes you balanced. When you get your hormones back mm -hmm. and you take an antidepressant for this kind of severe depression, then it works. Right. But if you don't replace the hormones, this is key. If you don't replace the hormones as well as treat somebody for the psychiatric symptoms of depression or anxiety, mm -hmm. then it doesn't work very well. And they still go out and, and behave dangerously to themselves or others. And, and that's, that is something we're trying to prevent. And it may not be that anyone knows they had the traumatic brain injury. Right. Uh, and they may not you, have even paid attention to what it. you see are the physiological changes or the personality changes that make somebody be somebody you don't know anymore. And so you want to start asking that question. You want to get them in to see a physician. You want to have them assessed by a physician or a psychiatrist or psychologist. And you want to make a move to say, could it possibly be the result of a brain injury? It can also be a result of the brain injury that they suffer from hormone changes and hormone losses, mm -hmm. uh, but particularly the increased emphasis in, in depression uh, and in loss of in things like Alzheimer's and, and dementia. Mm -hmm. So we're going to come back uh, for our next podcast and talk about dementia and loss of memory and mood changes that have to come, that tend to come from mood changes as a result of head trauma. Yes. Hopefully, well, you'll be able to join us. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.